Hello friends, welcome back to DigiTalk. And in this video, I am going to talk about the very basic concepts of SSL in WebLogic. Okay, what are the core component when we go for the configurations of the SSL in WebLogic? Okay, and uh, I will try myself to explain it in a very basic way, okay, in a very layman language so that everyone can understand. And because I had a discussion with a lot of engineers. And what I felt is that a lot of time they always get confused in the SSL concepts and specifically about the implementation of the SSL in web logic, what is the difference between identity and trust and certificates, key stores. Okay, so they get confused between all these concepts. So I have posted few more videos earlier as well in the SSL, okay, where I have exp completely explained with a with lot of examples, okay. So in this video, I am going to explain it again with, with, with again with some basic examples, okay, so that you can understand what exactly is SSL and how we implement it in WebLogic. Okay, so SSL is called a secure socket layer. It is a protocol that is used to secure the transfer of data between your browser and server. Okay, now what does it mean? So I will give an example. Okay, suppose if you access any of the secure website from your browser, okay, for example, if you have given google.com, okay, and so whenever we hit the website URL, secure website URL on the browser, it reach to the server of that particular uh, organization uh, data center where the application is actually deployed, right? And it traveled from the public network. That means if you are accessing the google.com from your browser, okay, that means your website is going to be accessed from the public network or from the internet, okay? That means your data uh, that is getting transferred from your browser to the data center of that particular organization, okay? I have given the example of google.com. So if you are accessing the google.com from your browser, that means whenever you access the website, okay, your uh, data is getting transferred or the website is also getting access from the data center, which is it, which is at a certain different location, okay? And you are accessing the website from a different location with the help of browser connected with the internet, right? So when specifically when we talk about the uh, sensitive data, okay? For example, your username and password, your uh, account uh, financial details, okay? And the lot of transactions that you do and your credit card information. So a lot of data, your personal data, everything is, you can say it is a sensitive data, right? And whenever it gets tra uh, traveled over the internet, okay? So we need certain kind of a mechanism so that your data can be secured when it is getting transferred over the public network or from the internet. Right. For example, if you are accessing any banking website, okay, then you get the website, uh, you access the website and then the front uh, page, you, access, you enter your username and password, right? And when the username and password get authenticated, yeah, then you load it on the uh, internal screen of your banking website and where you do a lot of transactions, right? So till you are connected to the website of a particular bank, okay? So whatever the information that you have passed to the website, Initially, you have given your username and password that is get authenticated from the uh, server, right? Server database of that organization. So that means whatever the data that you are entering from your browser, it is getting transferred from the public or internet to the data center of that particular organization, right? And, and it is completely in the bow direction. You are uh, sending some data and then you are getting some response from the server. So that means data is getting transferred in the bow direction when you access any of the website, right? So that data which is getting transferred over the internet, it has to be secured, right? So no one can uh, uh, take the benefit of your data, which is on the public internet. No one can, no one can steal your data in between. Okay, so that your your data should not be compromised when it is transferring over the public network or internet. Okay, so for that we implement the SSL, and the concept of SSL is very basic. We it encrypt the data which is getting transferred over the internet. That means whenever you enter any of the data from your browser. Till the data is reached to the server of that particular organization over the public internet, the data will get encrypted. So when the data is, will reach to the data center, it will again get decrypted with the help of certain technologies that we are going to discuss. And again, once the server will send response back to you via the internet and th that will reach to your browser, that data again will be encrypted from the server side and that data, was, once it reached to your browser, that encrypted data again will decrypt it. Okay, so that means in a nutshell, whenever the data is getting transferred from over the internet or public network, okay, that is data is getting encrypted. 
okay so it should not be a uh, compromise in between okay and the concept of this uh, conversion of the encryption and decryption what i am saying is that the from your browser data is getting encrypted then it is reaching to the server server is again decrypting it reading that information and again send decrypting the information and again sending back to browser and then browser again decrypting the information right so this is happened with the help of public and private keys okay so there are different ways to create public and private keys so we create the public and private keys so the work of public and private key is same when the data is getting encrypted with the help of private uh, public key it reached the server and then it decrypted by the private key and once the server is sending the response back to your browser it is again private key which will decrypt the information and once once it reached to your browser then at your browser end your public key will use to decrypt the message so this encryption and decryption when the data is transferring over the public network or the over the internet it is happen with the help of public and private key right so now when we are saying that our data is now secured and how our browser identify if a particular website is secure or not you i am sure you have noticed multiple times that whenever you access some website you get a security prompt that uh, the website is not secure and it give you an, an an warning that you should not continue with that one because the website is is not a secure website or it is not a trusted website okay but how our browser knows that a particular website is trusted and some of the particular website is not trusted okay so for that the basic concept of the two more uh, core concepts of your ssl is identity and trust okay so these are the two core component of the ssl specifically when we talk about the configuration in web logic okay we have to focus on configuration of the identity and trust okay so now what is identity and what is trust okay so it is very clear from the name as well identity that means it is your personal information right so when we say that we are creating the public and private key this is your identity your personal information because your data is getting encrypted and decrypted with the help of private public and private key so this is your identity okay this is your public and this is your keys which is getting used for encrypting and decry decryption of your data right apart from that you purchase the ssl for some of your website right so your domain name is your identity right apart from that you have your organization details or you may not have organization details you may have your own personal website but along with that you 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 give certain some of your personal information right if it is not your organization details so that is completely your personal details right so these personal details are called identity okay and all of these uh, personal details are stored inside a store which is called identity store okay so this is the first store which is called the identity store and which contain your private data your own data and in your own data you will have your public and private key along with your domain name and your organization or your personal details this is the first part right and second is the trust so how the trust is going to be created suppose that you have your own website you have launched your website okay if someone don't know about your website and someone is going to access your website first time how they will trust on your website how they will know that this is a secure or trusted website or not okay so that trust comes from the trust store or you can say from the trust certificates okay i will give an example for that in our daily life as well many time it is happen that when we go where we approach some persons okay to whom we don't know sometimes we go with the reference of a third person right to whom that person is no you are going to approach or maybe someone is approaching you to whom you directly don't know but that person is approaching you with the reference of some third person right so that is just to create a trust okay then okay if this person know this 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 one then okay this is again a trusted person so this same same concept work here as well when we launch our website and when we configure our website with the ssl to create the trust of our website to create the trust uh, between the users and users we purchase the trust certificates okay from some third party authorities which is called third party certificates and this third party certificates when signed by the trusted authorities it create the trust and when we enable this trust in our website with the help of ssl configuration then we get a green sign when we access any of the website with the help of https okay and that time you will not get, get any warning because your browser knows that this is a trusted certificate authority that means the website has been configured with the ssl and that ssl has a trust certificate from some of the trusted certificate authority right but now how your browser knows if it is from a trusted certificate authority or not 
So let me show you how your browser knows that it is a uh, from a trusted certificate authority. So go to your browser and settings, okay, and then search for the certificates. Okay, so once you will search, search for the certificate, you will see the manage certificate options, and here you can click on intermediate certificate and trusted root certificate. So your browser contain all of the renowned trusted certificate authorities certificate by default. Okay, intermediate certificate, and then maybe you have a trusted cert root certificate, trusted root certificate. Okay, so by this way, your browser identify whether a website is trusted or not, whether it is it is a uh, certified uh, website from a trusted third party authority or not. Okay, for example, if if I have purchased the SSL certificate from GoDaddy, okay, so my browser also contain the certificate, uh, root certificate or the intermediate certificate, public certificate from the GoDaddy as well. So whenever I am going to access my website, okay, which is secured with the GoDaddy SSL certificate, okay, then your uh, browser knows that it is a trusted website because it has been configured with the SSL, which has a trust from the third party certificate authority, certified trust authority, right? So by this way, your browser knows this is a trusted website, okay? So now, in a nutshell, when we go for the configuration of the SSL in WebLogic, we have two important concepts. One is the identity and second is the trust. So identity is your personal information and which information contained in the trust I have explained you. Right, and then trust how the web, 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 web browser knows that it is a trusted website or not. That uh, that comes from the trust, the third party certificate that we received. Okay, and that information we store inside a trust store. So we will have a two store. One is the identity store, which will contain your public and private key along with your domain name and organization details. Second is your trusted certificate, which will contain your third party certificates. Okay, and your identity store will also contain the as a server certificate that you will receive from the third party. Okay, that we are going to discuss below. What all are the certificates that we receive, and where exactly we store all of the certificates? Right now, apart from the third party certificate, one option is that self-certified options as well. That means you can create the self-certified certificate as well. You don't need to go to the third party certificate authority. You can create your own self-signed certificate. But again, if you configure your website with the self-signed certificates, it will display the warning that this website is not secure because it is self-signed because you are own certifying yourself. Okay. For example, if I, my organization is Digitalk and tomorrow, if I'm going to launch some of my website and I uh, create the self-signed certificate instead of purchasing from the third party certificate so i have to sign the certificate by my own signature okay and i am what i'm saying is that i am the digitoc and i am certifying that i am, I am the digitoc okay so this is not the trusted way of right right for the end users to trust on you or on me when i'm saying that i am the digitoc okay instead of someone else is certifying some some uh, renowned certificate authority is uh, certifying me Right, so that certificate is still give you a warning, and these certificates are used someone from the testing purpose. If you are uh, developing some applications that require the SSL, and you are doing in the development phase, in the testing phase, so you can configure your applications with the self signed certificate. So at least you can get the encryption features, right? And then that features you can uh, enable with the self signed certificate. And once you go for the production, then you go for the third party certificates. Okay, so, so far we have covered the basic concept of SSL, but what exactly is SSL? We use it for uh, encryption and decryption of data when it is transferring over the internet or from the public network with the help of public and private keys. How we generate it, we will discuss later part. Okay, and then when we go for the configuration, there are two major components that we need to configure in the SSL. One is the identity and second is the trust. So, identity is your personal information. Okay, along with that, it contains your uh, server certificate as well. Okay, which we get from the third party certificate authorities and then we have a trust store. So in identity store, we store our personal information, right? And in trust store, we store the certificate that we get from the third party certificate authorities, right? So these are the two main components. Now let us come back to the configuration of SSL in, in, in WebLogic. These are the different commands, step-by-step -step command that I have given. Okay, if you would like to know the execution of all of these all of these commands and the con the practical implementation of the configuration of all of these then you can uh, go to the description of this video link okay there uh, i have given the udemy link okay so you can uh, subscribe for the udemy course for the weblogic from digitalk and then you can uh, have the access of the lab of this uh, ssl exercise okay 
And let me go back to show you how the configuration work in, in WebLogic. So the first part is you have to create a key store. So what we have discussed so far is that you have an identity and trust. Your identity will contain your public and private key along with your domain and organization details. Right. So that means first we have to create the identity store which will contain your public and private key and your domain name and your organization or your personal details. Right. So this is the first step. What we are doing is with the key tool command which come with the Java. We use this command to create the identity store with the name which I have given as identity.jks. Okay. And here what we are giving, we are giving the options that what, what exactly we need. So the command is key tool hyphen generate key, gen key. And this is the alias for the private key that we are going to create. This is the key algorithm. When we create the key for the encryption and decryption, then what is the algorithm that our keys are going to use for the encryption and decryption of data? This is the size of key. So this is the same part key algorithm and key size it is used for the encryption and decryption of data. This is the signing algorithm. So as I said, we have two options. Either we can go with the self sign certificate configuration or either we can go with the third party certificates, right? So self sign when we say about self sign certificate, that means this is our own internal certificate, right? So when we generate the identity store, okay, this identity store contain our self sign certificate as well automatically. Okay, so for that we have to give this algorithm, this will be the algorithm that will be used to sign this self sign certificate that will be created with this command. Okay, and then we have to give the password for our uh, key. This is the domain name and organization name that we are going to configure. So with the CN for this CN common name, we generally give the address of the website for which we are purchasing the SSL certificate and then we have to give our organization details. So if it is there for personal use, you can give your own personal details as well. Okay. And then what is the validity of the certificate? So this validity is for the self signed certificate that is automatically get created with this command, right? So this is the validity of the self signed certificate because for third party certificate, they give their own validity. So this validity, which we have given here for one year, this is the validity of the self signed certificate that automatically going to generate with this command. Okay. And then this is our key store which will contain our public and private key and this is the password for your store. So this is your uh, store which contain the sensitive information. So we have to secure it with some password. So that password we give with the hyphen store password. So this is the very first command that we give for to create our identity store which will contain our self sign certificate as well. And the parameter what we have passed, this is the alias for our private key that we are going to create. This is the key algorithm and key size that is going to be used when we are going to generate the public and private key. This is the signing algorithm that will be used to sign our self sign certificate, right? And this is the key password. This is again key. This is a very sensitive information. So our key also gets secured with some password. Okay. And then we provide our uh, organization detail along with the website detail and then we specify the key store and then we specify the password for our key store. So now with this command, our identity store will get created along with the public and private key and which will also contain a self sign certificate. So if we go for the configuration of the self sign certificate, so what we do, we extract this self sign certificate which has been generated inside this identity store and then we import it in the trust store, right? Because this is, if, if we are going for a self sign certificate that as I said, this is signed by own and this identity store contain your self sign certificate as well. So if we go for the self sign certificate configuration of the website for testing and quality and development purpose. So what we do from this identity store, we export the self sign certificate that has been generated inside this identity store. And again, we import it in a trust store. So this is the command that we can use to extract or you can say export the self sign certificate from our identity store that has been created in the previous command. So the command is key tool hyphen export and this is the alias of our private key that we have given here. This is the name of the, uh, the self sign certificate that we are going to export and this is the key store, right? Our key store inside that, as I said, it generates the self sign certificate as well. So we are going to export it from here and this is the password for this is key store, right? And then once this self sign certificate is extracted, we can export inside into the trust store. So this is the trust store that the name that we have given trust.jks and what we are doing, we are going to import this particular self sign certificate that we have exported from our identity store and we are going to export it inside the trust store. 
So now what we have, we have the identity store that has been created in the first step. And we have extracted the self-signed certificate from this particular identity store and which we have exported inside a trust store. So now we have the identity store and we have the trust store. So now we are good to go for the WebLogic configuration once we have our identity and the trust store. So this is for the self-signed certificate, right? So now come with the CA certificate. So if you would like to uh, configure your website with the third party certificates, then this step is not required, right? Because we are not going to configure with the self-signed certificate. So what exactly we need to do? We have to generate a CSR, uh, customer signing request, okay? And then this request, we have to send it to the certificate authorities, okay? And then once we will send the CSR to the certificate authorities, they will send the three certificate to us. The first is the server certificate. Second is the intermediate certificate and third is the root certificate. So when we send the CSR to CA, for that we use this command to generate the CSR. The option is key tool hyphen cert request. This is the alias of our private key that we have created initially. This is the key language and key size, right? That we, for, we use for our public and private key. This is the algorithm that we are saying that has to be used once the, uh, the certificate authorities will sign the certificates. Okay, this is the file where the CSR will get generated and we are extracting the information from our identity store and this is the password for our identity store and this is the password for our key, right? Because our, as I said, key store and keys are the secure information and we have the password for our key store, we have the password for our uh, key file and then we have an alias as well for our key file. So we have to give all this information here once we generate the CSR. So once this CSR is generated, you can send it to the certificate authorities, right? So this is a, a demo uh, URL. So you can, if you are configuring for a demo purpose, then you can access this URL and then you can uh, copy paste your CSR and then you will get some certificates from here as well. Okay, otherwise you can send the certificate to the trusted authorities. So now they will send three certificate to you. So server certificate, intermediate certificate and root certificate. Okay, so that means whenever we send CSR to the some third party authorities, they always send you three certificate. Earlier, we were, get, we were getting only two certificate few years back, which is called server certificate and root certificate. Now for extra enhanced security of uh, the uh, communication, okay, one more layer is introduced that is called intermediate certificate. So in total, we'll get three certificate from the certified certificate authorities. The first one is called your server certificate. Second is called your intermediate certificate and third is called root certificate. Now what you need to do is you need to import all of three certificate in your key store, right? If we come back and see for the self-signed certificate, what we have done in the self-signed certificate, we have extracted the self-signed certificate from our identity store. And again, we have imported the certificate in the, in the trust store, right? So that means here we have imported the self-signed certificate, but when we are getting the certificate from the third party authorities, so we have to export all three certificates in our identity store and trust store. Okay, this is one of the core concepts that you have to understand. Once we get the three certificate from the certificate authorities, we have to import the certificate in our identity store as well as in our trust store. Now, what all certificate need to be imported where? So first thing what you need to do is you can uh, append all three certificate in the single file in the same sequence. At the top, you will have a server certificate. Below that, you have to copy paste your intermediate certificate. And at the last, you have to copy paste your root server certificate. Okay. So that means create a single file by appending all three certificate in the same order that you are seeing on the screen. And then import that certificate file where you have uh, clubbed all three in a single file into the identity store okay so here you actually really not need to uh, append the root certificate but as a generic practice what we follow is we we import all three certificate in the same sequence in, uh, in the identity store as well okay so what you can do is take all three certificate copy paste in a single file in the same sequence and once it is done you can import this in the identity store okay so now here what we have done is that we have imported the server certificate that we have received in our identity store okay and then the root certificate that we have received we have imported in our trust store 
okay so this is the file server.cer that we have created by combining all three certificate in a single file okay so uh, don't get confused with the name of this server.sir and that we are importing here okay so this is one single file what we have done we have uh, appended the content of intermediate and root certificate in the same file right and then we have imported that single file where we have all three certificate in the identity store right and then create a trust store and there you can import this root certificate that you have received and this is the command for that one and command is same what we have used for importing the self signed certificate as well the syntax is exactly same okay so let me reiterate what exactly we have done for the certificate that we have received from the certificate authority we have received three certificates so first we have done we have uh, added all three certificate in a single file in the same sequence that you are seeing on the screen and then that particular file we have imported in our identity store with the help of key tool import command right and then we have taken this root certificate and this root certificate we have imported inside a trust store with the name trust.jk so now again we have two stores one is the identity store and second is the trust store right so now that means we have received our identity and trust store so that means now we are good to for the configurations of the weblogic server okay so these are the command to to see the content of the certificate or to see the content of your uh, key store if you would like to check the content of your identity store certificate then these are the command okay just for the validation purpose okay now once we have the identity and the trust store then we go for the weblogic console and there we can click on the server and then key store tab inside that the default configuration is demo identity and demo trust because by default weblogic come with the demo identity and demo trust certificates right so now we are going to configure it with our custom identity and custom trust store so there what you have to do you have to select the option custom identity and custom trust okay and there you can specify the location of these particular files that we have created okay you must have created these files in some certain locations so you have to specify all those locations here along with the trust store password okay so once that configuration is done for that identity and trust then we, you can go for the ssl tab of the server and then you can specify your private key alias and private key passphrase once that is done you can go to the advanced uh, option of the ssl and there uh, you can disable the host name verification if you would like to disable it okay and second you have to enable the ssn listen port right so once you have enabled the ssn listen port okay and your certificates are configured then you can able to access the website or the url with the help of https okay so this is how we uh, configure the ssl in a weblogic the different commands that we use what are the concepts for that one let me do a small recap of that one we have understand the ssl what is the purpose of ssl right the encryption and decryption of data when it is traveled over the internet and how we do the encryption and decryption of data with the help of private and public and private keys okay and two important core concepts that is required for the configuration of the ssl is identity store and trust store identity store contain your private information your own information and trust contain the certificate that we received from the third party right and the first option you can uh, first when we generated the identity store along with, with the self signed certificate the first option if you are going for a testing and demo purpose you can uh, uh, export and import the self signed certificate in the in the trust store right and then if you are would like to go with the third party certificate then you have to generate the csr once the csr is generated and send it to the certificate authorities they will send you three certificate then you have to uh, club all three certificate in a single file and then you can import that in your key store key store right identity store and the root certificate you have to import in your trust store so once that is done you can configure the weblogic from the admin console and now you are done with the weblogic ssl configuration okay so if you would like to know the complete execution of this exercise end to an execution in the lab of this one you would like to show the execution then you can go to the des description of this video there i have given the udemy link okay you can subscribe for the course and then you can learn it in build details thank you